Hey, what is up guys? I'm KBHD here and this is it. It's finally here. The well talked about, heavily rumored 16 inch MacBook Pro has arrived. So I think the most interesting thing about this laptop is that it's replacing the 15 inch MacBook Pro. It's not going alongside the 15 inch and then the other sizes. This is the new biggest MacBook Pro and it's slotting in at the same starting price that the 15 inch MacBook Pro did, but with some obvious and market improvements. So these are my first impressions of those improvements. So the design, first of all, as you can see, is pretty much exactly the same. Same footprint as a 15 inch MacBook Pro, same four USB type C ports, but it's 0.77 millimeters thicker and a quarter of a pound heavier. It's 4.3 pounds. Same space gray, but it now comes with uh, space gray stickers now. So that adds to the total confusion about which Apple devices come with which stickers. But the main difference now, of course, as you can tell by the name, is the new 16 inch display. Really it's just modernizing the look of the laptop by pushing out the display from 15 inches to 16 inches. And that's a bigger canvas for everything you already do on the laptop. That gives you a new resolution of 3072 by 1920. So that's the same pixel density of 226 PPI, same brightness, 500 nits, same P3 color gamut, but just imagine basically pushing more of that display outward to shrink the bezel and give you more screen real estate. That's the biggest major change, and I love that. Now with this bigger display, if you take a look at Apple's site, you may also notice they're somehow claiming 11 hours, so an extra hour of battery life. So if you're wondering how they did that, it's because the extra tiny bit of thickness combined with improved battery chemistry allowed them to fit a new 100 watt hour battery in the 16 inch MacBook Pro. Fun fact, and some of you fellow video makers may know this, 100 watt hours is the largest physical capacity lithium ion battery you're allowed to get on a plane with in the United States per the TSA. So they kind of maxed that out. And I'm pretty sure there are other laptops with 100 watt hour batteries, but that doesn't mean they can't keep improving the battery. They can still do things like improve the chemistry and density to make it smaller and lighter. But that is a pretty good point for the MacBook Pro to also improve battery life. I kind of like this new Apple trend of doing better with battery in 2019. That's the biggest battery they could fit in the MacBook Pro. It'll also come with a more powerful 96 watt USB type C charger. And that charger is also in the same footprint as the previous generation. So then there is the keyboard. So this is one of the sticking points of the last MacBook Pro. Uh, that butterfly mechanism didn't do so hot. Uh, there's some new things with this keyboard. And by new things, I mean also kind of old things. So they're going back to the scissor mechanism for the switches from the years of like the 2015 MacBook Pro. They're more reliable, they're more clicky, they have a little bit more travel. It's almost as if going back in time is actually kind of an upgrade here, uh, but it's not exactly the same as previous generations. It's really kind of a hybrid in between. It's still low travel, about one millimeter of travel, but it's more stable than butterfly keys were. They're calling it the new magic keyboard. So very Apple. Uh, there's also now a dedicated escape key, which pros were asking for, and just normal people like me too, because the escape button on the touch bar froze so much that it was almost useless. So thank God that's back. And there's also now a bespoke separate touch ID unlock sensor. And it's a physically clicking button as well to turn on and off the computer. And then performance is also a bump up. So you might recall that was also kind of an issue last year. You might remember the thermal throttling issues with the i9 MacBook Pro. This is also improved. There are Intel 9th gen 6 core and 8 core CPUs again in this laptop and new fans and a new internal layout will improve airflow by 28%. And here are the new specs. Still current gen stuff as you can tell. And you might notice it goes up to eight terabytes of internal storage now and up to 64 gigs of RAM. So definitely gonna have to do some testing to see if this new spec can do the heavy lifting that I require for my mobile video workflow. Uh, but we'll see. Also, a little nugget of news today alongside this new MacBook Pro is the new Mac Pro is officially coming out in December at some point alongside the Pro Display XDR. And that will also support up to eight terabytes of internal storage. Nice. Then there's also some smaller things that they've changed with this refresh. Um, the speaker system, there's a new six speaker speaker system. And the speakers in the MacBook Pro have been, from what I've experienced, top of the line in a laptop for a while now, so I shouldn't really be too surprised by this, but these speakers are really good. Like I said, it's a new system with redesigned subwoofers that are now physically connected to each other so that they cancel out the force that they would have applied to the chassis so they don't rattle as much. They're called force canceling. 
Again, doesn't matter what it's called, but they are good stuff. So yeah, like I said, best speakers in a laptop around right now. And they also included what they call a studio quality microphone. And they call it that because the new hardware of the microphone array has a much improved signal to noise ratio. But I'll let you be the judge of it. How does it sound? Honestly, I think it sounds pretty good. Not necessarily as good as they made it sound like I could record a podcast with this, but nevertheless, I'm happy to see audio improvements and this is pretty great. This is awesome for video calls and quick casual videos like this. I would have liked to have seen a video improvement with the webcam too, but they didn't do that. Either way, that's pretty much it. I mean, you can tell by the length of this video, it's a pretty small refresh. There's not a whole ton going on. It's still the same, you know, design, same huge trackpad, same ports, but it's more of a refresh on a better ideal 2019 MacBook Pro. So I will say, because this is my first impressions and it's not my full review yet, I've got a lot of laptops to review right now, but this is my new favorite MacBook Pro, mostly because of the design and the display. This is a laptop I'm most likely to carry to edit with. But what I would actually love to see now is a 14 inch MacBook Pro in the same footprint as the current 13 inch MacBook Pro. So update that 13 inch with new specs, but also slim down the bezels and sort of modernize that too. That would be sick. That would be my favorite MacBook Pro that they could make. Anyway, I'm about to get on a plane to go to that Motorola event that's tonight. We'll see what they announce, probably a folding phone. And uh, we'll bring this laptop with me and see if I can edit that video on this laptop and I'll see how it goes. I'll tweet how it goes. So thanks for watching this first impressions and first look at the 16 inch MacBook Pro. Add it to the docket of videos that need to turn into reviews by the end of the year, but it's coming soon. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.